Hello everyone, welcome to the newspaper analysis for today and we are anal analyzing the Indian Express. Um, let's start with uh, the Law Commission's new recommendations regarding the POCSO uh, Prevention, uh, Prevent Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act. Right, Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act. So basically regarding this act, um, which deals with protecting uh, children against sexual offenses conduct uh, happening against them, be it by a minor or by a major, right? So the law commission has recommended that the judiciary, while announcing their orders, look at 16 to 18 ke ages ke children in a different manner, right? And include the possibility of tacit consent. Um, sex is obviously a stigma in our country and uh, which leads us to believe that every consent given under 18 would not qualify as consent right at all whereas there might be a case wherein there are two minors engaged in a sexual act so to treat them with the same lens as we would treat a 30 year old man engaging in uh in, in sexual relations with a minor is not advisable right and it has long-term consequences and this is what they are saying obviously they're not tinkering with the age of consent which is 18 years but they're saying that if the accused is between 16 to 18 years then we might look at the possibility that consent was there right so they have said that the judicial discretion is utmostly important in deciding whether in sentencing we can treat the 16 to 18 years of age of accused as uh, you know a bit as as that there was consent in there and the liability would reduce and that is what the law commission is stating right uh, the concern, the need, the Law Commission report underlines that mental trauma and harassment children face of a consensual act falls under the ambit of POXO, right? And uh, so basically, they are visualizing a scenario wherein there might be two minor minor children involved in sexual relations and to punish one of them um, would, uh, or both of them, would result in an aberration of sort. It, it is illogical to punish both of them under POXO. If the if, if consent is there so the law the law commission is only saying that the judiciary while interpreting this law can imply can assume that there was tacit or implicit consent while engaging in that in those relations that's what some other news with respect to canada and uh, the us has stepped in now <coughs> to urge both parties right the us cannot bear to see india and canada two of its closest allies again in the fight against china to fall out on this issue and therefore they are trying their best to ensure that there are diplomatic resumption of ties. Right. Uh, Nipah virus is in news. Um, Kerala suffered the first cases of Nipah virus in India. Nipah virus is a zoonotic virus. It transfers from animals to humans and here it has transferred from a certain thing called fruit bats. Okay. And uh, the first one of the first Nipah patients to make a recovery was just was in Kerala in India and that is why this has been in the news and don't worry this won't turn into a COVID like -sit situation yet anyway we come to uh, an agriculture related news considering MS Swaminathan right so here from Rajasthan to Haryana in the western fields they are suffering from something called pink ball worms and uh, Cotton plants may this has been affecting the uh, the growth of the plants and the product. So pink ballworm is a pest here, insect pest that is affecting cotton plants, right? In Haryana, Rajasthan, and uh, Punjab, right? And uh, this uh, the government is looking to do something about it. Asian Games may uh, Palak Gupta won the gold medal and. Isha Singh won the silver medal in the 10 meter air pistol event. Okay. Um, now we come to POXO law, which we are discussing on page 1. Mein, uska extension hai. So this, this paragraph is uh, basically explains the intent behind it. That the blanket criminalization of sexual activity among and with a child, though intended to safeguard children, is leading to the incarceration of young boys and girls who engage in such activities as a consequence of sexual curiosity and need for exploration. That may to some extent be normative for an adolescent. It is a natural behavior in an adolescent, right? There's a social cost associated with the present situation, including the negative impact upon the health, both physical and mental of the children, as well as burden upon the investigating agencies and courts, which takes away focus from the cases that are genuine and require immediate consideration. Exactly, right? So let's see what happens regarding this. But currently, the age of consent 
remains 18 years that is not a problem uh, one more thing we might look into while discussing poxo is the existence of something called a juvenile justice board which comes from the juvenile justice act right here ages 16 to 18 can be tried as adults under this act for committing heinous crimes this came in after the nirbhaya case right wherein one of the accused was a minor and he was let go after a, a small stay in a juvenile facility so the juvenile justice act basically ensures that ages 16 to 18 ke minors committing heinous crimes and while committing those crimes they had mens rea of a nature which was of an adult at that point so the court may consider the fact that these children are actually not children they are monsters and hence because of uh, the heinous crimes they have committed they can be tried as an adult so once the juvenile justice board under this act certifies that yes you can try this person as an adult they will be tried as an adult and sentenced also as such if life imprisonment mil hai, to wo milega. death mil hai by hanging wo bhi milega. right so some information there um there's some state related city related news not of much relevance to us some more again not of relevance to us some ads related to Uttarakhand I hope they fix their um, infrastructure considering that everything sort of washes away in the monsoon uh, something regarding the women's reservation bill which has now become an act one third reservation, 33% reservation in Lok Sabha and the state legislative assemblies. But there direct elections, hote hai, directly elected hote hai members, there is 33% reservation and not in the Rajya Sabha, not in the legislative councils of states. Hai? Only in the Lok Sabha and the legislative assemblies of states. It is called the Nari Shakti Vandan Act. right? And this is the first law uh, which is passed in the new parliament building. This will be known as the Constitution Amendment 106th Amendment Act. The 106th Amendment is the Women's Reservation Bill, right? The Nari Shakti Vandana Act 2023. And it will be, uh, shall come into force when it is a point which is notified in the official gazette. As you know that any act which is passed by the parliament and then given assent by the president only becomes law when it is officially notified in the Gazette of India, which comes in every newspaper uh, across India. So there's some argumentation as to why this bill does not require ratification by states. The government says that it does not require ratification by states since it doesn't change the actual number of seats that the states have in the parliament, right? And when you change seat sharing patterns, then only you need to get the consent. Here we are giving blanket reservation to women, be it an SC seat, be it an ST seat, be it a general seat, right? And uh, the seats are already reserved for SCs and STs will also come within the purview of Women's Reservation Bill. So you may, might ask how this will work. But it will work like this, horizontally reservation will work. In the sense that uh, in, a, in a seat which is reserved for SCs, in all seats, for example, in the state of UP, if there are uh, say 150 total seats in the state legislative assembly and uh, for example, there are 30 seats reserved for STs. So, in 30 may say bhi, 33% jo seats honge, one third seats honge, which is 10 seats, will be reserved for women across, uh, across the constituencies, right? So, usme bhi one third hoga. That is how the cross uh, horizontal reservation works. EFIRs ko file karne ke liye, there is some uh, um, recommendations by the law commission that EFIRs are, can also be allowed. Fair enough. Now we come to another set of news. Kaveri water dispute abhi chali raha hai, right? Keep coming up, keep coming up, considering the water deficient nature of the two, two states. Yes, let's come to some other news. Other trivia, more trivia, more trivia. This census is a very good article. I, I hope you read this on your own also. Right. Um, let's try to understand here this article seeks to address the whole relevance of the census in India, right? Whether it is needed or not, uh, if if it is needed, why is it being delayed? Can it can we afford it to be delayed? That sort of a thing. It gives us both perspectives, right? And then you can form an opinion of your own at the end. Now, here we can see that uh, 
जो वुमेन्स रिजर्वेशन बिल पास हुआ है वो तभी एप्लीकेबल होगा जब डीलिमिटेशन एक्सरसाइज के बाद जब फाइनलाइज uh, हो जाएगा नया सेंस नया सीट शेयरिंग नेक्सस तभी रिजर्वेशन स्टार्ट होगा सो यू कैन वेरी वेल एक्सपेक्ट द नारी शक्ति वंदन अधिनियम टू बी इन्फोर्स्ड इन 2029 और 2034 उसके पहले तो यू कैन नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी फाइनलाइज एंड अप्लाइड Another primary reason for that being is that this delimitation exercise, delimitation का मतलब ही है कि कितने seats होंगे हर state के पास वो decide करना. So यहाँ पर the delimitation will be done after the census conducted after 2026. So we have made sure that census जो है 2026 के बाद ही conduct होगा, right? And uh, 1881 से हमारा census चला आ रहा है और पहली बार ऐसा हुआ है COVID of course कि हमें हमने एक census नहीं किया है. So let's first look at so these are the questions this article seeks to answer that what and how does the country stand to lose if it does not have a timely census if if there's a census needed at all can india do without a census so firstly why india why have a census at all <clears throat> since the start of economic reforms there have been two big changes when it comes to comes to publicly available data one is that the data is becoming digitalized right which is guiding policy makers secondly मिनिमम गवर्नमेंट अगर हमें इंश्योर करना है तो डेटा ज्यादा से ज्यादा हमारे पास होना चाहिए राइट ओनली देन वी कैन हैव मिनिमम गवर्नमेंट एंड मैक्सिमम गवर्नेंस राइट द होल जैम ट्रिनिटी मिनिमम गवर्नमेंट मैक्सिमम गवर्नेंस जन जनधन आधार मोबाइल राइट विच एनेबल्स डायरेक्ट बेनिफिट ट्रांसफर विच एनेबल्स मिनिमम गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट मैक्सिमम गवर्नेंस कैन ओनली हैपन वेन वी हैव इनफ डेटा विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अकाउंट होल्डर्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दर आधार कार्ड दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग राइट सो डिजिटलाइजेशन भी और मिनिमम गवर्नमेंट भी सो दैट गवर्नमेंट का इंटरवेंशन कम से कम हो और लोग खुद में सशक्त हों अपनी uh, अपनी लाइफ को जीने के लिए राइट फॉर दैट होल फॉर दैट फॉर फॉर दोज पर्पसेज डेटा एंड ह्यूज नंबर्स इज नेसेसरी राइट एंड एन आर्ग्यूमेंट कैन बी मेड दैट द कंट्रीज एवरी डे फंक्शनिंग विल नॉट बी टेरेबली इफेक्टेड इफ सेंस इज डिलेड बिकॉज द गवर्नमेंट इज ऑलरेडी कलेक्टिंग अलॉट ऑफ डेटा राइट अमेरिका में देर इज अ थिंग कॉल्ड अमेरिकन कम्युनिटी सर्वे जो कि कंटिन्यूसली सर्वे करता ही रहता है राइट इधर एन ऑनलाइन मोड और एन ऑफलाइन मोड बट वो चलता रहता है देर इज नो पर्टिकुलर सेंस एज सच जो ऐसा ऐसा प्रपोज किया गया था कि देर बी अ कम्युनिटी सर्वे जो कि चलता रहेगा वी डोंट वी डोंट नीड टू है सेंसस बट द यू एस अथॉरिटीज स्टक टू द डेनियल सेंसस टेन ईयर सेंसस because of the constitutional requirement and the fact that the acs the community survey may not accurately capture from a policy perspective right now we look at um what this person says that problem is this is the problem with basing policy making on administrative statistics is that many indians fall outside the scope right sabse bade examples are migrant workers and this is we cannot afford to miss out on the lesson given to us by covid with respect to migrant workers right uh the chief statistician a former chief statistician of india says that uh, he wants against the thinking that administrative statistics or any such set of data can replace the census it is a fallacy it is a wrongful move to replace the census data with any other type of data right so he gives an example also that the prime minister now had announced that india was open defecation free but the national family health survey came and showed that 30% of the houses did not have toilets right so may but and the fifth national family health service showed us this so census is also needed for a reality check on the administrative programs and the policies of the government right it is not only just to collect data but to reflect whether uh, policies of the government have been as effective as they are being told that they have been right housing schemes sanitation schemes subsidies that sort of thing how does it delay hurt us right census is the foundation of the statistical census of the country right system of the country it says that household surveys are undertaken in the countries draw their samples based on census data though the nfhs we saw this also is based on the census of india kuch na kuch data aapko census se chahiye hi hota hai and when a data when the census data is 14 years old then not much hope is there for it to be that accurate as you want it to be so that's what they're saying if the census is delayed the foundation is is distorted right the original picture is distorted and as such samples based on it will also fail to represent it be representative of the reality right uh how does uh, a delay in census falter our interpretation of data the first is where 
रूरल अर्बन पॉपुलेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इसको समझने के लिए राइट सेकेंडली इंटरनल माइग्रेशन इंटरनल माइग्रेशन ऑफ माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स यू कैन थिंक ऑफ दैट एंड दीज आर इन बोथ फॉर्मल एंड इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर राइट देर आर सम स्टेट्स विच एक्सपोर्ट लेबर सम स्टेट्स विच इम्पोर्ट लेबर सो टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिविजन ऑफ दिस लेबर वी नीड टू हैव अ गुड सेंसेस थर्डली मोर्टैलिटी डेटा फर्टिलिटी डेटा तो भी नहीं आता नहीं आएगा सही से और मोर्टैलिटी डेटा भी नहीं आएगा कितने लोग पैदा हो रहे हैं कितने लोग मर रहे हैं सो टू हैव प्रोजेक्शन ऑन द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंडिया वी नीड टू हैव गुड सेंसेस डेटा राइट एज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बिकॉज अभी हमारे पास डेमोग्राफिक डिविडेंड है we are a young population the majority of our population is young but there will come a point of time such as in china and japan wherein the majority of the population will start aging and we will not have a young population so we need to extract the maximum out of our population in the current upcoming years right and uh, a professor says that almost all major policies are decided on the basis of census data be it primary health centers uh and you need to be on the ground to understand the importance of primary health centers this is the first point of contact for anything that goes wrong in a t or 3 town or a village right and also there might be a problem in the allocation of food grains under the nfsa they are giving examples also that genuine beneficiaries are being excluded under the nfsa and that is a huge problem of us because we are using a dated population base right we are using a dated population base so there is there's a huge chunk of the population which is entitled to receive food grains under the nfsa but is still not getting it whereas those who do not deserve food grains under the nfsa they are still getting it so to rectify these distortions caused due to inavailability of data it is pertinent that we conduct a census as urgently as possible right and uh, so we say that while the census has may have started out just as a population count and even now is often seen as a central government exercise its biggest contribution is not in providing a macro estimate but in providing the exact and granular detail of india's reality right so some questions are there some, some things is mentioned here which basically summarize ki kya ki kis tarah se ground level pe census zaruri hai a census can tell us how many people in a particular village of a particular district in a particular state were disabled how many had a roof over their heads what kind of roof was it mud cement or something else how many were looking for a job how many had migrated and why how many still use wood how many get clean drinking water so all of these real life daily use questions can only be answered when we have an accurate and timely census right private sector also suffers a lot if census is not there because a lot of data a lot of policy such as insurance sector may is based on census right and the private sector is also arguing is also gunning for uh, the revival of the census as quickly as possible right also that uh, the, the census should not be looked at something which will only be used for the delimitation exercise it should be looked at something which is overarching and uh, it is above the politics of our days right it is it has been going on since 1881 and it should continue with a neutral objective right and uh, that basically we, the census should be absolutely neutral right there should not be any political element to census in the explained page there is some cultural some political issues mentioned regarding <coughs> the agama the contested history of temple priesthood which is uh, not very important as such then there is some news on illicit trade right illicit trade ke upar which is the un office that deals with it un office on drugs and crime unodc says that india's 3 trillion economy usme se 159 billion dollars or 5% of the country's gdp was actually illicit trade and this is basically 1.9 billion ye basically reported nahi hai to ye state exchequer ke paas nahi gaya aur ye jo paisa government ke paas hona chahiye tha wo nahi aaya aur hum use nahi kar paaye public ke use mein nahi ho paya wo right so that creates a huge problem for us and fikki ka ek report aaya which is in the news federation of indian chambers of commerce and industry please remember the full name which says that india's uh, economy is suffering a lot because of illicit trade so they have divided into various uh, various types of illicit trades which is illegal financial flows right wherein tax evasion ho jaye ya is tarah ki cheeze black money ho jaye that would be illegal financial flows और हवाला ट्रांसफर्स दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग टैक्स हेवन्स में करना पनामा पेपर्स एंड ऑल इफ यू माइट रिमेम्बर राइट टेरर एंड क्राइम उसका कॉस्ट क्या होता है राइट टेरर हैज एक्चुअली कॉस्ट इंडिया 
approximately 1170 billion dollars right at per, at ppp purchasing power parity which is approximately 6% of the country's gdp ye kaise estimate kiya humne ye isliye kiya that almost 80% of the containment cost related to security and as the economy and illegal economy grows india's cost of addressing terror and crime will be significant so if crime was lessened maybe the need to spend on it would, would also be lessened right aaj hum defense pe sabse zyada kharch karte hain in our budget the reason for that being is that we are we are threatened on all sides organized crime bhi hai right uh, where there are fewer people but uh, the amount is bigger counterfeiting currency india and china are the leaders drug economy we are at the center of two major drug trade routes which is the golden triangle myanmar laos and thailand and the golden crescent afghanistan pakistan and iran so west mein hamare golden crescent hai और ईस्ट में हमारे गोल्डन ट्रायंगल है सो प्लीज कीप दैट इन माइंड गोल्डन ट्रायंगल ड्रग ड्रग इज म्यांमार लाओस एंड थाईलैंड टुवर्ड्स आर ईस्ट एंड गोल्डन क्रीसेंट इज अफगानिस्तान पाकिस्तान एंड ईरान राइट इन बैक इन द 70s फॉरेनर्स यूज्ड टू सर्चिंग फॉर ड्रग्स दे यूज्ड टू कम थ्रू दीस एरियाज एंड यूज्ड टू कॉल इट द हिपी ट्रेल राइट व्हेन दे यूज्ड टू ट्रैवल टू म्यांमार लाओस थाईलैंड एंड इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान आल्सो इन सम केसेस Balochistan is a problem for pa- uh, Pakistan, right? The biggest province in Pakistan is Balochistan. ये सब बातें थी. Covid related, there's some issue, there's some news. Um, फिर से आ गया है because here we can see that the Covid Water Regulation Committee, which is the technical arm of the Covid Water Management Authority, so the broader body is Covid Water Management Authority. उसका technical arm is Covid Water Regulation Committee. इसके जो recommendation is to Uh, upper riparian state का मतलब होता है जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल दे इज अ रिवर एंड यहाँ पे कर्नाटका है और यहाँ पे तमिलनाडु है राइट सो कर्नाटका इज द अपर राइपेरियन स्टेट एंड तमिलनाडु इज द लोअर राइपेरियन स्टेट राइट सो कर्नाटका को ऑर्डर किया टू रिलीज थ्री थाउजेंड क्यूसेक्स ऑफ वाटर टू तमिलनाडु एंड इसके ऊपर काफी डिस्प्यूट चल रहा है बेसिकली एंड दो ऑल ऑफ दीज इशूज कैन बी एट्रीब्यूटेड टू डिफिशियंट रेनफॉल एंड इन करेंट टाइम दिस डिफिशियंट रेनफॉल कैन बी एट्रीब्यूटेड टू क्लाइमेट चेंज सो यू सी a conflict happen happening between tamil nadu and karnataka and common people uh, being hurt and uh, losing livelihoods and having huge difficulty in access to water is can be directly attributed to climate change right so this basically gives us more so this is a, this is how you need to think think out of the box thoda sa in the sense that there's a ripple effect in terms of everything that happens right so let's see what happens with the kaveri water management authority there is an article which deals with publicity rights of celebrities anil kapoor amitabh bachchan all of them have been trying to copyright uh, basically their mannerisms and their way of doing things right and is anil kapoor wala case this is the first case that considers the potential of publicity personality rights in india and to mitigate image distortion and circulation concerns at a time when generative ai can be used to create and disseminate profitable deep fakes and synthetic media at little to no cost uh, i i really hope you read this article because is because there's not much academic outlook to it but um there might be a legal passage that could be formed based on celebrity publicity rights right and because it's an interesting topic so i hope you read it if you notice this particular paragraph the court holds that reputation and fame can damage various rights of a person including their right to livelihood right deploying this broad rights language to refer to all users of injuncted demonstrates the dangers of irresponsibly constitutionalizing ip law right there is uh, no need to actually treat celebrity rights as so important as as it to come under light to livelihood these are people making crores right so that sort of a thing is mentioned so it's a fun article you'll have more fun reading it yourself and uh, a few rss related view points here gandhi ambedkar and then now ram madhav writes brilliantly menika guruswami she has uh, a problem with pakistan playing in india it's okay up to each his own um here yeah, this is this is relevant india is setting up its first ever semiconductor fabrication unit this is a huge deal because semiconductor fabrication unit he is the measure of whether a country is actually involved in semiconductor manufacturing or not theek hai लैब में बैठ के सेमी कंडक्टर्स नए नए बनाना दैट इज नॉट सेमी कंडक्टर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग फैब्रिकेशन यूर बेसिकली मीन्स प्रोड्यूसिंग इट इन वेरी लार्ज नंबर्स एंड इंडिया फर्स्ट सेमी कंडक्टर फैब्रिकेशन यूनिट इज कमिंग अप इन अ प्लेस कॉल्ड ढोलेरा गुजरात देर इज अ फनी हिस्ट्री टू ढोलेरा गुजरात इफ यू गूगल इट बट अभी के लिए 
it is opening up in uh, Dholera, Gujarat. So this writer basically is pointing out to the fact that to become a major player in semiconductor fabrication, we need to have a very serious and professional outlook and we need to inculcate the best values, not Jugaad values, which India currently has, right? Look at this paragraph. India is a vastly different story. In purchasing power parity terms, we are the third largest economy in the world. Consumption has also increased in many fold. A fifth of all global semiconductors and design is done in India. Why bold wrong? The design is done in India, but kya fabrication ho hai? Fabrication is a major thing, right? Designing is not. And Indians are leading global tech companies, that sort of thing. Purchasing power parity. Ye kafi bar aaya hai hai paper mein. Let's just understand what this is. Purchasing power parity basically means, for example, take a burger. Okay. There's a burger. Um, India may iska cost would be say 60 rupees and uh, one dollar equals rupees 60. Okay. And US may iska cost is three dollars. So in Indian terms, burger ka kya cost hai America mein? 180 rupees. Right. Therefore, our purchasing power parity is three times that of US. Getting it? So that is why we can understand that India, that is why India is such a easy place to live in because our purchasing power parity is so high. The uh, economy is made up in such a manner that the purchasing power equals or betters most developed countries, right? And that is why India is benefiting the rewards of its huge population considering the scale at which it does, does things. Yaha pe log kam hai, isle prices bhi zada hai. Hamare paas log bohat hai, isle prices kam hai. Okay. That is what purchasing power parity is. A comparative reflection on the prices. Um, apart from that, let's look at any other news that may be relevant. Suicide bombers in Pakistan, potent orders, Wagner commander to take charge. Okay. Some business news, film reviews. This movie is highly recommended, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. And uh, that is all for today. Thank you. Some sports related news, of course. There is there. The Asian Games Peacekeeper track. Aaj kya chal raha India ka? India, India is in fourth. We have surpassed Thailand at 33 medals. Fair enough. If there is some other, uh, if there's some very unique news regarding Asian Games, we shall cover it in later, later papers. Uh, I hope that was fun. Thank you.